Welcome to Sheboygan County Government Working For You. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program, although my co-host and fearless leader, County Board Chairman Bill Gehring, could not be with us today. I am very pleased, however, to have our guest, Dean Ray Hernandez, with us to talk a little bit about the roles and responsibilities, not only of his position, but some of the very exciting activities and developments that have occurred out here at UW Sheboygan. So, Dean, it sure is good to see you. Well, I'm, I'm glad to be here, Adam. Thank you very much for having me. Ray, please start sharing a little bit about your background and what attracted you to the position. Well, my background is uh, I've been in the higher education business for about, oh, about 18 years now. Uh, started out as a, a faculty member um, uh, and moved up to the faculty ranch, ranch of professor and, and then I began um, slowly evolving and doing more administrative uh, type of roles, uh, starting with a department head, then associate dean, and then ultimately uh, uh, campus dean, which I am at this point. Um, <clears throat> what attracted me to uh, Sebastian, to this campus, is, was the fact that it's a small, um, campus with uh, close ties to the community. That, that is important to me. And I like the feeling of being um, uh, very involved and, and closely tied to um, uh, the well-being of the community. And so that, uh, that was attractive to me about this campus. And you were hired at, as the dean here in 1999, 2000? No, in 2000. In 2000. Yeah, so I've just finished five years. Well, you've clearly had a very successful track record in that short period of time. And as you said, UW Sheboygan is, is part of the community. And there's really an interesting partnership between UW Sheboygan, the state, and Sheboygan County. Mm -hmm. Please touch on that a little bit. Well, that, that partnership, um, that's back to the 1930s uh, when um, UW Madison um, saw the need to provide um, programs to other parts of the state and um, uh, the, the university system entered into uh, agreements with uh, local uh, units of government. Um, <clears throat> whereby, uh, in this case, the county would provide facilities and the state or the UW system would provide the programs and the staff for those programs. And so this was uh, during the Depression era and um, um, uh, the state at that time you know, needed to provide some type of programming to citizens across the state, not just from the, from the Madison area. Right. And so that's how this partnership began, and so it's, it's a long history. It's been here ever since the 1930s. Yes. And I think a lot of people um, yet recognize that the grounds here, the buildings, are actually under county ownership. Mm -hmm. you know, as you pointed out, the county owns the, the buildings and the facilities here, and the state is responsible for the operations, and they mm -hmm. hire good people like you and your staff here to to provide the education and operate mm -hmm. the facility. Um, what's happened with the enrollments out here? I know there's been a lot more demand. How has the en enrollment changed, say, in the last five years? Uh, we've seen uh, significant growth in enrollment over the past five years. Um, I, as uh, the trend has been that more and more people are, are seeing the need to uh, pursue higher education and uh, that has translated into enrollment growth at all universities, uh, but certainly here at UW Sheboygan, we've seen steady growth. Uh, we've seen an increase in the number of uh, what we call non-traditional students. Mm -hmm. These would be um, uh, working adults, uh, you know, folks who are place-bound, if you will, who are working, raising families, and. Uh, in the community, so they don't have the luxury of traveling to one of the four years campuses. And so uh, we've seen a, a, a pretty good increase in 
enrollments by you know, those types of students. And another thing that's happened in the past five years along with the numbers going up, um, and, and I'm pleased to say that we've seen the diversity of the student population go as well. We've seen increases in numbers of students of color and other um, underrepresented groups, you know, finding access in higher ed. Mm -hmm. So these are all very positive things that have happened in the past five years. What's the total enrollment out here today? Uh, Approximately. In, in terms of headcount, we're a little over 800 students. A little and, over 800 students. Yeah. And when I arrived here, we were maybe about, uh, about 550. I'll be darned. Very yeah. good. So Now, there's been also more discussion of late about you know, the two-year campuses across the state. I think there's 13. 13. Mm -hmm. And whether or not some of those two-year campuses should become four-year campuses. And one of the more recent initiatives has been the two years actually can funnel students into a four-year degree, can they not? Yes. What's that relationship? How does that work? <laughs> well, historically, these campuses have been um, uh, playing the role of a transfer institution, you know, so that students come here and basically complete the first two years of a four-year degree. So after two years, they would transfer. Uh, the, the, the trend that, that we're seeing because of, the, of those non-traditional students and the place-bound students I was mentioning earlier, mm -hmm. there was a need to provide them with opportunities beyond the two years, the first two years. And so we began collaborating with uh, the four-year institutions to actually bring the last two years of a four-year uh, degree right to our campus. Hmm, okay. And so uh, we've collaborated with uh, UW Marashi. We have uh, four uh, degrees there, uh, Marashi degrees that can be earned right here. We have a uh, one four-year degree with uh, UW Stout in industrial management. Uh, we have actually a <clears throat> one graduate degree program that's a master's in, in education uh, that is delivered by UW Oshkosh. Okay. And our most recent program, and we just last week finalized the agreement uh, with UW Oshkosh, and that's a, a Bachelor of Science in Nursing uh, completion degree. Uh, and we're, we're, we'll be enrolling students beginning next fall in that one. Outstanding. So this is how we're, we're uh, responding uh, to the needs in the community. The fact that uh, the state of Wisconsin ranks, I think, 35th in the nation as far as bachelor's degree holders in the state. And so the Board of Regents and the legislat uh, legislature want to address this. You know, they want to increase the number of, of people within the state that, that hold bachelor's degrees because that, that's how we can attract the kind of jobs in industry if we have um, uh, the educated workforce that's sure. required for those jobs. And so, it's tied to the economy of the state. Sure. And so, you know, this is, this is some important, uh, these are important collaborations that, that we're involved in. And by UW Sheboygan offering now a four year degree essentially here in a number of the areas that you just mentioned, that helps the local economy because then parents and grandparents and those who might be supporting a person going to school won't have as high of expense if they went no. to a UW Madison or another four-year campuses, is that uh, correct? Absolutely, uh, not only is the tuition uh, less, but you don't have the expenses of, of um, housing and, and travel and all the rest of it that, right. that's associated with, uh, with that. You know, folks can live right at home and many times uh, keep their job uh, while at the same time finishing up their education. Now, those who are watching this program, and particularly if you have an interest in going back to school or if you have a, 
a son or daughter who's interested in, in looking at what UW Sheboygan has to offer, if you haven't been here for a while, let me tell you, you're in for a pleasant <laughs> surprise because we've had a number of improvements out here. I know that uh, Dean Ray Hernandez took the lead in initiating a complete overhaul of the air conditioning and heating units here, about a $1.8 million upgrade, and most recently, the UW Sheboygan Science Edition, which mm -hmm. was just a tremendous project that was completed last year. Uh -huh, yeah. Can't recall the day we had the, the final ceremony, but. Yeah, it was right in the summer. End of summer. Mm -hmm. um, please share with our viewers a flavor for what they can expect if they come up here for a visit. <clears throat> well, in, in terms of the uh, uh, HVAC system and mechanical upgrades, all of our buildings now have been upgraded, so they're very comfortable, uh, they're well lit, uh, uh, we have no problems in terms of, you know, uh, keeping the buildings warm or, 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 or cool, as that may, whatever required. And, and of course, uh, the resulting energy savings have been tremendous. I mean, uh, just in terms of um, utility costs, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen a steep decline in those expenses, mm -hmm. but we've seen a sharp increase in the comfort level. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. always good. Good. Um, yes, we just completed the, uh, the uh, Frank G. and Friete Bratz Science Building, uh, so named because uh, the Bratz family uh, donated uh, $500,000 towards the construction of that, of that facility. But we finished the science building, but what that allowed us to do then was to take the old science labs uh, and convert them into uh, regular classrooms but they're state-of-the-art classrooms, but we netted about eight new, eight new classrooms for the campus, so they're very nice, very ample, uh, well-equipped, uh, very comfortable classrooms. So we've got more classroom space, and we have a new science building with state-of-the-art science teaching facilities, um, you know, which are fabulous. They're beautiful, they're yeah. just beautiful. And, and again, that's the partnership between the county and the state and the private sector. And the private uh, the, the sector. The Bratz family was obviously very generous and, and it's uh, named very appropriately. Mm -hmm. So well, why was that important to UW Sheboygan? Why is that important to the community to have a, a science edition and, and some of the upgrades that you speak of here, mm -hmm. but particularly the science edition? What value does that bring to the community in UW Sheboygan? Well, um, <clears throat> it, it brings, it allows us to, it, it provides students attending here access to, um, you know, state-of-the-art, uh, first-rate uh, teaching facilities. You know, the facilities that were, the science teaching facilities that were previous to the new building were, um, you know, built in the, in the 60s. They were 40 years old, and so they weren't keeping up really with um, the new curriculum, you know, the new, uh, uh, programs that, uh, in, that are involved in science and technology. We, we weren't able to deliver the kind of instruction that today's science student requires in order to uh, be successful when they transfer or, or go on to, to uh, the four-year institution or to a four-year degree. Right. So they just weren't getting the, uh, the preparation that, that this new facility allows us to do. And beyond that, now we're able to expand our program offerings. Uh, you know, I just mentioned the nursing degree program. This is going to help support that. Uh, there's some uh, potential new programs in the sciences and uh, in engineering, for example, uh, and other scientific fields. Uh, the biotech, you know, the biotech uh, field is now uh, it, it's uh, fast becoming a, um, a priority for, for our state in terms of economic development and, and training of future uh, employees and, and types of industry. And so I think this building will then allow us then to move in those directions with our, our curriculum and our programming and so providing our citizens with, with many more opportunities, you know, in those in those areas. Right. 
real investment in the community. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of investments, you just <coughs> briefly touched on the $1.8 million HVAC upgrade here and, and a $4.5 million science edition that now students are enjoying. And I think many people maybe have heard, but perhaps not, that you're sh very shortly going to be breaking ground on a six-plus million dollar technology center. Yes. Uh, again, in part thanks to uh, Acuity. Mm -hmm. Touch on that, if you would, please. Um, our facility, again, uh, with the idea in mind of having this campus uh, keep up and bring it up to date with the current needs uh, of, of students and, and the community and, uh, at large. Um, our technology, is, you know, along with biotech and those kinds of things, technology certainly is a, a major component of, of, uh, of the future of our state and uh, an area in which we need, we need to provide uh, education and programs. So uh, we need to have a center that would focus on technology. And then also our library, um, our current library is uh, was also outdated and, and we weren't able to um, maintain a library that would support all of the new programming and all of the new uh, curriculum that we're trying to bring online. So, this new building then will provide that. It will provide a state-of-the-art uh, uh, technology teaching center as well as a new library uh, that will, of course, support everything else that we do on campus. Sure. And so um, <clears throat> the, the cost of that building then, the building that we needed to have, you know, um, uh, the estimates were in excess of the of the cap that the county has on on, on facilities. So uh, we were fortunate that um, to have a corporate partner in the community who who also understands the need and is willing to support uh, those needs. So they stepped up and said uh, that they would uh, donate 1.8 million dollars towards uh, construction of such a facility. Acuity and Mr. Ben Salzman have cer certainly shown their commitment to the yeah. community, mm -hmm. not only in bringing, I think, five, six hundred dollar, six hundred new jobs just down the street here. Mm -hmm. I think we read in the paper just yesterday or the day before that they're going to be putting up one of the, the tallest flagpole <laughs> in the nation, in the yeah. country, which <laughs> kind of speaks to the pride that not only they have, mm -hmm. but the community has in the area. Right. And then to step up and contribute $1.8 million mm -hmm. to a learning center as important as this. Yeah. You uh, know, it, it really speaks well. Yes, it, it, it indicates a very forward thinking uh, on their part because this center then will not only train and provide future employees for them, but future employees for other businesses in the area and, and, and so forth. So it's very forward thinking on their part. Anything you see out on the horizon, you, you're speaking of forward thinking, uh, you have, again, in your short tenure, proven yourself to be a forward thinker and have worked with both the public and private sector to bring many of these projects to fruition. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you see out on the, on the horizon from a standpoint of the organization here or what we might expect 5, 10, 15 years from now? Well, I, I believe we'll see uh, a continuation of, of the trend of, of bringing more bachelor degree programs to the campus and, and maybe someday even the University of Oregon will offer its own four-year program. It, will, it won't be a, a degree of, of one of the other four years, but a standalone program here. Uh, I see that, that as a potentiality as well. And uh, I see increasingly more and more uh, uh, partnering with uh, with community groups and businesses and organizations, you know, to provide programming and, and support, support of the campus. We have some uh, organizations right now that are looking to lo locate some, some facilities here that will benefit the community. Uh, one is a children's uh, garden that is being planned 
that would be available for public use and, and children to, to utilize a very a beautiful garden based on, lyrics, on children's literature. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a group that wants to bring a, 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 a little... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. A baseball diamond, uh, a little baseball diamond wants to locate it on the campus. Uh, and so, you know, I see more, even more um, participation by the community on our campus. You know, not only in terms of educational program, but programming, but recreational programming and so forth. I see that increasing, where this campus becomes more and more um, uh, a focus, uh, uh, a center of gravity, if you will, uh, for the community mm. and, and the kinds of, of services that we provide. It's a pretty nice vision. Yeah. <laughs> now, all of this future programming and the projects that have happened to date and that are going to be happening in the near future, of course, that takes money. Mm -hmm. And one of the trends <clears throat> that uh, have been occurring of late at any level of government is some belt tightening or concern mm -hmm. about the increasing property taxes or taxes of any kind. Right. And I know as a state operated facility, you rely on state funds for a lot of the program that occurs mm -hmm. out here. The state is in the midst of their next budget process. Mm -hmm. And how at this point does that appear to affect UW Sheboygan specifically? Well, if, if there are any cuts to the UW system budget, any cuts to the system budget will impact us in terms of reduced, you know, revenues coming in. Right. So, right off the bat, uh, it will impact our ability to um, <coughs> absorb any more growth in enrollments because we, we might not be able to hire additional uh, part-time faculty uh, we may lose some staff if, if it turns down that we have to lose positions because of the, of the budget cuts. We will probably lose them in support services. So that means that you know, students may not be, won't be able to get the level of, of advising and other types of support that they're accustomed to uh, when they come to our campus. It might take a little bit longer, it might be a little bit more problematic in that respect. Uh, for the students, it might, it might translate into tuition increases, you know, which we don't like to see. But, you know, as you know, you know when, when a revenue stream starts to diminish, at the same time that costs are increasing, you've got to, somewhere you've got to find the, you've got to find the resources. What are you hearing thus far at the state level? Do you, do you sense that the UW system is going to take a hit, or do you think it might be more status quo? Um, I'm afraid, you know, with the deficit being the way it is, uh, right. um, you know, I think all agencies are, are going Everyone's to going to be part of the solution. Part here. of the solution, yeah. And so we're hoping then to minimize that, that impact. But that's what it hurts us the most, is, is in our ability to access, provide the access to students that, that they're expecting. Now I've got a loaded question for you. Some of our viewers watching this program today might be thinking, well, you know, since the trends have been what they have the last few years with state and local budgets and everyone's being asked to tighten their belts and do more with less, how is it? How is it that we were able to make the investments that we were at UW Sheboygan, mm -hmm. the improvements that have occurred the last few years. Um, how, how do you justify that? Well, the main way I justify it is that if we don't make the investment, you know, whatever our, whatever our economic picture looks like today in this state, if we don't make the investments in education that we need to, it's going to be much worse in the future. Is, is the bottom line because the future economy of this state and of this area is going to be more and more dependent on the level of education of, uh, of, of the people uh, and the workforce and the kind of uh, job skills and, and training and education level. Uh, if you don't invest now, 
we're gonna be we're gonna be hurting uh, down good. the road in my estimation. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, we only have a couple of minutes remaining. Uh, Dean Ray Hernandez, is there anything else that you'd like to to share with our viewers in the couple of minutes we have left? Um, basically, to say thank you, Adam, and and. Uh, uh, members of the county board for the support that you've shown for this institution and uh, it's been a pleasure working with you and, and um, the county board chair and, and, and the other members of the county board and I'm just grateful for, for the support that, that we've received from the county for this, for this uh, institution. Well, it's kind of, kind of you to say and no doubt, no doubt that Dean Ray Hernandez has played just a huge part in making some of the very important and needed improvements occur out here. I think sometimes UW Sheboygan is one of the jewels of this community that, and one of the best kept secrets, frankly. I know the Dean's done a lot to get the community more involved and more aware, and certainly the success he had with getting the partnerships established with the Bratz family and Acuity and, and all the other activities that he mentioned earlier uh, certainly reflect well on the Dean and the entire UW-Sheboygan campus. But uh, this is just a fabulous, fabulous community yeah. organization, UW mm -hmm. campus, and I hope that if you haven't had a chance to come out here of late, please take the time to do so. It's, it's, it's something else. So, Dean, thank you so much for being our guest today. My pleasure. I'm sure Chairman Bill Gehring would have really liked to be here today in particular because he is a graduate yes. of UW-Sheboygan and I know shares the Dean's pride in the activities and the campus itself. So on behalf of Chairman Bill Gehring, myself, Adam Payne, and the Sheboygan County Board, thank you very much for joining us today, and we'll see you, we'll see you soon.